Hi guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 15 of Practical Drupal Development. We have a pretty quick and simple tutorial here this episode. All we're going to be doing is creating two content types and then populating those content types with a little bit of content. Now it's going to seem a little strange that the two content types that we're going to be creating are pretty much going to be exactly the same. However, the content and their purpose are going to be completely different and therefore we're we're going to separate them down into two separate types. So what we're going to be doing is creating the about section of our website and the services section of our website. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to then be using views to create some dynamic displays and some cool little sidebars. So let's jump right on into this. If we come up to structure content types, we're going to click on add a content type. We need to give it a name, so we're going to go ahead and start with our about content type. And we'll give it a quick description here. Alrighty. We are going to take off the promote to front page, we're going to take off the display authoring information, and we are going to close the comments, and we are going to take off the menu for now, and we'll save and add fields for this. Now there's really only two fields that we need here. We want an image to display on our about page, and then we also want a body to enter in the text. So let's go ahead and add in our image field here. We'll modify this machine name to be about underscore image, and we will then add the image. We'll save that. We'll scroll down here and we will turn on our alt and title fields so that we can get a little more SEO, and we will save. The next field that we need is our body field, however I'm going to again delete out this body field so we can get that customized machine name, um, really for no other reason than theming. So let's go ahead and add the body here, and we'll call it about underscore body, and what we're looking for here is the long text, text area with multiple rows. We'll save that, move on. Now there's one thing on this page also that we're going to have to turn on, and that's the filtered text so that we can use that WYSIWYG editor that we installed with in the last few episodes here. We only want one body, so we will save that. Now, instead of populating this with content right now, what we're going to do is quickly just come up to structure, content types, and we're going to add another content type here. And we're going to call this one services. We'll give it a description. And like I said, these descriptions are really, really important and come in handy when you're not necessarily the person that is going to be editing the content on the site. It just lets them know what this content type is used for. Again, we're going to turn off promote to front page, we're going to turn off the display authoring information, close the comments, and take this out of the menu. And we'll save and add fields to this as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the exact same two fields that we added in the last one. So we're going to add an image field, so we'll have our services image, uh, which will be the image field here. And it may seem a little strange that we're just kind of doing these simple repetitive things, but this is really the process of building a site. We'll turn these on. It's about coming up with a good structure. Uh, what's going to be the best content layout for this website? How am I going to break down these content types? And what fields need to be added to make them work? In our case, we have two content types here which are pretty much the same and we could make them uh, one one content type if we really wanted to and that's kind of more of an advanced way of doing things using views to kind of sort them and separate them and I will be doing an advanced series on Drupal here 
hopefully soon as we come more to a close on this one, which will be covering topics like populating an entire website using only a single content type, uh, things like that, and all of the crazy modules to get in social media feeds into your site and just different kinds of image sliders and all the kind of references and crazy things that you can do with a website that really are going to take the, the, the fundamental things that we're learning here in this series and just build upon them to a point where you can pretty much do anything that you want to do with your Drupal site. However, this is where it all starts. It starts by identifying content types. It, it starts by identifying the fields you need. That repetition of creating content types, even though they might be exactly the same, it's learning how to do it and how to do it well. Good naming conventions, uh, things like that, that will really set you up for when we move into the advanced series to have a good, solid foundation so that you're not lost when we dive into those really crazy topics. So now we have our two content types uh, that are exactly the same except some machine names there. I'm going to head over here to lorem ipsum or lipsum.com and I'm just going to take some of this and we'll head back over to our site and we will add an, our, our, an about page here. And we will call this one who we are. Let me paste in this here into our plain text. If you paste directly into this, and I can't remember if we had covered this or not, if I come over here and copy directly from this and paste it into this text editor and hit source, you're going to see that all of the styling information that was found on that site has been transferred over as best as Drupal possibly can. And now when you hit save, this will look as close to the, the source that you copied from as possible. Now, when you go in to theme your site, this can cause a lot of problems because it already has inline CSS printed into the text and that is not as easy to overwrite. Whereas if we paste this in completely plain as just the text, then we will have an easier time manipulating it in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out of here and I come over here and make sure that it didn't leave anything in. And if you click this paste as plain text option and paste it in here and click OK, Drupal will not then add all of that inline styling. It will just paste it in as completely plain text and we'll have an easier time manipulating it in the future. Now I do need to grab an image. I'm just going to continue to use my stock images that I had used in the past tutorials and we'll come down here and we will click save. Now, we don't have a way of getting into this content section. We really need a menu link up here in order to at least get to one of these two pages that we're going to be creating. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to be creating a sidebar with views that will dynamically populate this section uh, as soon as we post a new about page. But for now, we at least need to be able to get to one of them. So if we hover this edit link and look in the bottom left corner, you'll see that this is node 23. So we'll come up to structure, menus, main menu, and we're going to add a link. And we are going to call this link about, and we're going to link over to node 23. And we'll save that. Now we want the about link to be the second link, so we'll click the handle and drag it up and click save. And now we can close this down, let Drupal refresh, and we will see that our about link is in the menu. So we now have a way to get into our about section. And there are a couple of housekeeping things that we need to take care of here while we're in here. Obviously the image is too big and there's labels here and our URL structure is incorrect. So let's, let's fix these display issues here first. If we go to structure content types, hover about and manage display, and we click on that guy, we can take the labels off here. If we click the settings button, we can set this up with our basic image. And we will save this. 
Now when we close this down, we'll have our labels gone and our image will be an appropriate size. So now let's tackle this URL alias issue here. Let's hover configuration. So we need to go to search and meta metadata, URL aliases, and patterns. We'll find our about pages and we will go about forward slash and then just the node title in square brackets, node colon title. While we're in here, we might as well take care of the same for our services. We'll do services forward slash square bracket node colon title square bracket and we will save that. Now, since we have already created this one about page, we need to update the URL alias for that page. So if we click on content, and since it's new, it will be the first one in our list, so we really don't need to filter it down. We can just click the box next to it and update URL alias, and click update. Close this down. Drupal will yell at us because our page is no longer found at who-we-r, so we need to click our home link. Click back on our about. And now we have this set up just the way we wanted. Let's add one more piece of content so that when we um, create our views in the next episode, they make sense and you can actually see what's going on. So we have who we are, why not add what we do? And we'll give it that wonderful one-stop white. Again, we'll paste in that plain text, and we will save it. As you can see, our URL alias is correct, our page is looking good, but we do have an extremely big problem, and that is that once we move away from this page, well, we have no way of getting back to it, unless you click the back button. But for all intents and purposes, anybody coming to our site is not going to actually have any access to this page, and that is what we are going to be fixing in the next episode. So don't worry about it for now, we'll take care of it in the next episode. Now let's add just quickly a little content to our new services section here. Uh, let's just say that we offer tutorials, and we'll give it an image, give it some text and we will save it. Again, we need to, our URL alias is correct because we fixed that, but we need to come into structure content types, services, manage display, and now you're starting to see that it is a lot of the same things. We don't want these titles, and we really could have fixed this uh, prior to adding content because we know in advance now, we've done this for several pieces of content, several content types, that when you add a field, it automatically puts the label on its displays. So if you don't want that label, you need to move over there and turn it off. And you can think of those things now, even before you add content, because you're starting to get used to the flow of how Drupal works. You add a field, then you manage its display. You add a field, you manage its display. You populate the content, you might see something that oh, this label would have worked really great here because it's a PDF download and we want people to know that it's downloads. So you leave the label on. Um, just things like that. And you're, you can start to get a feel for how Drupal works, how your flow really needs to go. Because if you're on a time constraint, it's better off to add the fields and then manage those displays immediately before you even add content and go, oh man, now I have to go back. So you're starting to get this feel, this flow of the Drupal platform and how that system works. Uh, we're going to add a couple more pieces of content here. So we'll head up to services. Uh, what else can we offer? We could offer fine wine. Although you will not get that from our channel because I'm not buying you a bottle of fine wine. I'm sorry. Um, but we'll use it for now. And we'll save that. And then the final thing that we are going to add. Why not friendly service? I don't know. I'm really bad at picking up these uh, fake titles and coming up with fake content. That's why I'm using a lot of lorem ipsum. I am really hoping that your content creation process is going a whole lot better than mine, 
because mine's just a hot mess of the same image, the same fake text, and some really crappy titles. Now, we are not going to place this in the main menu. Reason being is because in the next episode, we are going to be creating a views page, and we are going to then toss it into the menu via the views page, because we're going to spit all of these services out on the same page, so the user can see all of the services we have to offer, any kind of image that goes with it, the text that goes along with it, without actually having to take a click further into it, they'll be able to see all of that content right there. Now, there is one thing that has been driving me nuts from the get-go, and it's the fact that I have forgotten to take the title off of this block. So I'm going to come in here and configure this block, and we are going to take the title off of it. Now, Drupal has another trick. You can do in the... Uh, the carrots here, you can do none, and that will ensure that no title actually is placed in that. If you delete the title out of a block, most likely it's not going to put some arbitrary text in there, but it is a good way to ensure that nothing finds its way in there. If you're adding it or editing it later, it allows people to see, hey, this has none on it. Maybe I shouldn't put a title in here. So it's just kind of like future-proofing your site, even if you don't really need to. Uh, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. I know that we didn't really cover anything new. All we did was create two content types that were pretty much exactly the same, but they're going to be used for two completely different things, and they're going to have two completely different setups, two different looks and feels, and it's just kind of a, another way to see that just because you're building a site doesn't mean that it has to be complicated. In fact, the more simple your website is and the easier it is to build, odds are it's going to be a whole lot easier for the end user to navigate through and find what they're looking for. And a user who can find what they're looking for is going to be extremely happy with the performance of your website. So happy customers make happy business owners. So we didn't really cover anything new. We will in the next episode, but this is taking us one step farther in the process of building your first Drupal site. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in the next episode of One Stop How To Guys, Practical Drupal Dev